All right. Um, Paul lives up in uh, Minneapolis and actually uh, is feeling the same kind of weather that we are today. So um, wanted to uh, let everybody know I kind of handed out little things. Uh, I am a sales guy, but I'm hoping that we can not really have a sales session, um, which will be hard for me. But um, there's a reason I have Paul on the line as well. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this is phenomenal for the group to be set up and, and the workshop and boot camp that, that everybody put together. I think as big data and, and those technology and our technologies kind of grow and expand in the market, um, it, it's very important. So kind of what I wanted to do was just do a couple kind of introductory and then Paul is online and he will actually get into the product and do much more in depth. Uh, so that you guys will understand uh, the, the types of technologies that we can leverage. As soon as I can get my... How many in the group here, and I know it's very heavy in the, the architect and, and uh, enterprise area, any data analysts, business analysts, all that kind of stuff? Oh, that's great. Good. Um, so when you look at uh, what Platfora is and, and kind of came about, Platfora is about four years old, uh, product is about two years old, about 20 months actually. And the technology is really focused on changing the mindsets from your traditional business intelligence tools, uh, such as you know the MicroStrategies, Cognos, Tableaus, all those other tools that are very good at structured reporting, structured data, uh, and things of that nature. With the onset and, and adoption of Hadoop across the marketplaces, um, Platform started looking at what are the you know challenges and, and what we're going to be able to do. So uh, we are a technology that is a business analytics technology that focuses and it supports 100% Hadoop. Um, we are native to Hadoop and can provide uh, basically analysts the ability to query and, and run against uh, your Hadoop clusters. So, and we'll show all how we accomplish that and things like that. We are HDFS uh, compliant, so any of the Hadoop distributions that you're familiar with uh, are supported by the Platform platform. platform. Um, and so I know you guys spent a lot of time yesterday with Hortonworks. Uh, with Ron and Paul, uh, and then uh, I know Matt R was here. Um, so we support all of those technologies. Um, basically, every single release about two to three weeks after that. So um, it's an end-to-end -end platform. Uh, everybody, you know, kind of the the technology is really geared towards multi-structured data. There's so many definitions now of big data uh, and what it really means. Uh, what we're focusing in on is, is kind of defining it as multi-structured data inside of your Hadoop data lake or data reservoir uh, or whatever terminology you've decided to, to adopt within your organization. Um, and so when you look at that data, whether it's structured, unstructured, uh, and the nature of Hadoop, we have the ability to pull that into our environment uh, for you to, to basically do analysis and queries. The other key thing that I'll talk about is self-service and from a business analyst perspective, uh, how you actually leverage technology, the technology to, to do kind of your day in and day out jobs. In your environments today, how many, in the, how many support basically providing data to business analysts and data analysts? Okay. So basically you get the call saying, hey, I want this data uh, or I want this uh, report. You have to then go try and figure out where it is in the systems, uh, what, what system, what database, what field, you know, all that work that you, that you have to do to accomplish. We're not saying that that's not important and not gonna be going to be important. <laughs> Getting a, I don't wanna do it. <laughs> no. um, basically what, what we're doing is, yeah, is, is providing your business analysts and data analysts and data scientists the ability in a self-service environment to go directly against Hadoop. You're not getting all the calls. You can just say, hey, the data's in there. 
yeah. start, run your queries, run your report, you know, your, your analysis and, and come up with, with something different. Uh, and we'll talk about our, what we kind of define as lenses uh, and in-memory technologies. That's who we are. So the traditional approach, you've got your file system, it's all nice and neat. Um, you know where the data is or have to go search and find it. Um, take a look at Hadoop and, and kind of as your adoption of Hadoop as kind of that cardboard box. You can kind of just throw everything in there um, and reduce your significant costs in storage and, and all those types of things. Um, but the big challenge has always been what's in there? How am I going to you know, be able to you know, take that incredible cost savings in that incredible environment and find out what's in there? And we'll actually show and get into that. If you look at this analogy, and I'm going to build it out real quick. <coughs> of your data and, and what you're providing to your business analysts and data analysts, all of the various consulting firms and you know people out there, you're you're basically analyzing, they've defined about 12% of your data. So it's, you know, what is that sales per region? What is that uh, you know, click through rate or bounce rate for my various companies. Um, and that's fairly well known kind of data and there's technologies that focus just on those data. These, the, the, our approach to this is, is very, as I mentioned, multi-structured and providing the ability for business analysts to go against all of the data. Uh, so the whole model of coming to you guys to ETL it out, do the data modeling, put it in a format to read. Um, we actually accomplish all of that within the platform uh, throughout the enterprise. So this whole iceberg is actually a great analogy uh, for the market, uh, as well as you know looking at what you traditionally did and what you have the capabilities to do now. Paul will talk as he gets into the product. And, and Paul, are you still there, by the way? I am. Okay, good. I'll, I'll have to put a mic down there or something. Um, basically, we'll talk about the intellectual property that, that Platform has brought to bear. Um, we'll talk about the various pieces of the, of the product set that supports this initiative. Um, so the deep processing, everything down kind of at this layer, that's, we're using Hadoop as kind of an operational store. Um, using its function and capabilities uh, to be able to sure, uh, basically serve up into what we kind of, this distributed in memory accelerator, which is what we call a lens. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and then provide a UI that gives business analysts, data analysts, data scientists, the environment to basically go against all that data. Uh, and we'll show some of that. We provide that kind of thought-driven cycling. Um, part of the challenge is, you know, there's so much data in Hadoop. If you write a high query, how long will that take you to actually run against your environment? You know, we're talking about getting answers and getting data back in minutes uh, and seconds versus hours, weeks, or months. So. Um, it provides that environment in uh, one of the, the interesting ways is we actually auto-generate the MapReduce to communicate back and forth between HDFS uh, to basically pull the data that you're asking for. So when you're looking at uh, um, these environments, the other avenue is that our new release coming out is actually fully Spark enabled. So if you're leveraging Spark within your environments, uh, it will actually auto-generate that, that spark back and forth between HDFS uh, and the environment. This is what it kind of typically looks like from a business analyst and data analyst. And for those that raised your hands that are in those roles, thank you for being here. <laughs> um, because a lot of times we can kind of get caught up in um, kind of the bits and bytes of things and we want to kind of extrapolate this a little higher uh, to give you those capabilities. Um, you kind of point platform at your HDFS environment 
it's a fully scalable environment, so it actually scales with your Hadoop cluster. Um, and you provide what are, what are called data sets, and, and typically technology people will help set those up uh, in, in the environment. Kind of look at the data and start running queries, start running uh, what if scenarios. You know, you ask your first question is usually the pretty easy one. It's always the challenge to ask the second, the third, the fourth, and, and ongoing uh, in an iterative fashion. Um, one of our customers, Tui Travel, uh, you know, they used to have a, a process that took weeks to get data back, uh, and get information in, in a presentable format, um, to where they actually did it in 20 minutes. So. Uh, so pretty significant time savings uh, throughout the organization. Quick question about that. So did they already had, have Hadoop in yes, place? Yes, they did. They had, so, they had a Hadoop cluster in place. Okay. Um, and their traditional approach was they had to ETL out the data, do the data modeling, figure out you know what data they needed, and then they would use a traditional type of business intelligence tool. Okay. Um, and that took them a long time, that cycle, was pretty lengthy in time. Um, so that's really the, the core of it. We're not in a technology state of saying, you know, get rid of everything else. Um, it's very good at what it does on the structured data. Uh, this is more of an or exploratory uh, type of, of analysis and visualization technology. Um, so. Do you also then use it on traditional uh, data structures? Like um, so we have the capabilities through JDBC or ODBC uh, to pull in various types of you know, data sets. Um, I'm not going to say that we want to go against your full data warehouse, um, but you can actually put certain data sets in there. Can you process it in memory? Um, so we process at the lens level. So all the processing is done in Hadoop. At the lens level, we actually have an in-memory capability that will take subsets or of that data or the data up into the lens so that you can basically do that iterative cycle. Do you have caching your lens? Um, it's actually an in-memory kind of columnar storage MPP environment. Uh, so the founders of our company uh, were the product managers and developers of a technology called Greenplum uh, that they sold to EMC. Uh, so kind of that mindset of how it addresses, or how it is, is uh, kind of looking at Hadoop and how that works together is really where it kind of bore out of. It's on Pivotal now. It's on Pivotal. Pardon me? Green Plum is now on the Pivotal. Yeah, Green Plum is now underneath the Pivotal yeah. environment. So Pivotal HD we support. Okay. Um, and so, so yeah, I mean, any of the, even the open source Apache, HDFS, Amazon, um, Cloudera, any of the, HDFS environments, distributed environments, we support. Um, and so I'm, I don't want to get too much into these uh, kind of use cases. We have them available. You guys can look at them. Um, but I want to get Paul. Uh, Paul, are you there? Uh, hold on. I don't know how this is going to work. Is it a mic? Paul speak. D, let me get the wired mic because these are the same three things. Oh. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear Paul okay? <laughs> okay, they're bringing another mic, but what I'm going to do is actually turn the presentation over to you. Did you get it, Paul? Still seeing my yeah, screen. I think he's got it. I think he's got it. That's for uh, question. If that's better, we can use that too. I just don't want a whole bunch of feedback. Come on. Come around behind me. Come around behind me. Like this? Come around behind me. They both should be live now. Perfect. Paul? 
Yes, sir. Okay, good. Um, this is great. My mouse is disappearing. Hopefully, it's still here. It's really Probably have extended desktop. Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is really great. Where's my mouse? Okay, Paul, how about now? All right. Can you see it, Paul? Make the other Paul Peterson there, please. I have a, a mirror screen here, so I can see the performance. Okay. Sorry about that. There we go. Excellent. Thank you. All right, hold on just a second. I've got to get uh, set up projecting up. So, so his question is, is Splunk more like how Hadoop does files or not as far as the ingestion? And my answer is it's basically exactly the same thing. Um, you have to put your data into the system as its own copy of the data. And when you do that, you can modify the data, you can trim it. On the way in, Hadoop lets you do that too. They have one of the pieces they said the piece where you do that, but it has to go into the system as a separate copy. So you can have listeners okay. who take an RSS feed. All right, I'll just walk now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, no, finish your question. No, no, no that's I'm just, totally it's, 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 not, it, it's not streaming. It sends it, it will if you're writing to a file continuously, yeah, but I mean, you can have it set on a port and have some stream data in. It's however you want to get it in, but it's got to go in, and it'll be time stamped in the event, not when it gets it. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Paul. Sorry. No problem. Is everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me, Chris? Yes, we can. You can maximize this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Let me know if uh, you can hear me and I'll, I'll start yelling. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. As, as Chris mentioned, uh, my name is Paul Peters. I'm a sales engineer with uh, Platform. I reside up in Minneapolis. And Chris said that uh, it sounds like it's cold down there, but it's feeling we're a little bit colder here. I just looked at it, it was seven degrees outside, so I don't know what it is uh, where you're at, but I'm sure it's a little bit warmer. Uh, so, anyway, what I wanted to do was begin to walk through the Platform solution. And I wanted to specifically uh, talk about it in context of uh, really what we do. And, and our, our goal is to provide, really uh, enable all of the analysts to get the data that they need. And, and really, I, I look at it more as a uh, 
commoditization of big data, you know, allowing everyone to have access to the data that they uh, produce. And, and just to set the stage a little bit, I've, I've got a few slides here. And really, if you think about how we've analyzed information over the last you know, 20, 25 years from transactional systems, and you know, you've got your, your various ERP and CRM systems and your other operational uh, systems that, that run your business. And what you need to do to analyze that information is to move it out of its uh, the source that it's in, the operational source, and get into a format that's more readily available for analysis purposes. So in order to do that, you need to ETL it and design specific schemas that are uh, geared towards uh, analysis purposes, whether it's a data warehouse or data marks. And then you, you take your tool of choice or tools of choice and you put that up against the, uh, the data warehouse or the data mark and you analyze it. So that's the, the traditional analysis and to build an enterprise data warehouse with any anyone who's done that in the past it can be a very time consuming uh, task that you really never finish doing. It's always changing, it's always evolving, and it's really not as, as flexible as you want. Um, and there's plenty of tools that help in each one of these different phases from the transactional storage to the ETLing, uh, various technologies that are available for data warehousing, and obviously a lot of the visualization. Uh, tools that exist today. But what we're finding now over the last several years is that data is migrating to Hadoop for a very, uh, variety of reasons. Um, initially, it was as a, a way of offloading and you can start looking at you know, other use cases. And uh, you can obviously run very large batch jobs against Hadoop, and the performance uh, benefits were there. It was highly scalable. And then you started also moving what I would call non-traditional sources of the Hadoop as well. So things that you typically didn't store in your transactional systems so are things that you typically would not analyze in your data warehouse. So things like uh, webhook data, sensor data, um, web log, POS data, so data that was very voluminous, multi structure, really didn't have a place to, to go to be analyzed. So that's all being ordered to do. And if you look at it, what's the data is to do, you know, how do we analyze? How do we leverage that data and really you have to go back into the traditional analysis pipeline. But it's sometimes very difficult to do that. It uh, requires a specialized set of skills, um, which I'm sure many of you in the room have, whether it's you know Python programming, Scala, Java, <coughs> understanding MapReduce, understanding uh, all the uh, various tools and some of the tools you've been working with the last couple of days. While you guys are familiar with it, sometimes it's very difficult for a, a typical end user to get access to. So it's, it's really hard to do this traditional pipeline. So what ends up happening is you start with big data, you start with the, uh, the massive wave or the iceberg, as you see on the, uh, the left there, and you need to create MapReduce code, and you need to model it, you need to, to put some of the data into um, smaller data sets, or you need to model it within Hive um, in order to get it with a format that is readily accessible by some of the, the BI tools. You need to further massage it and get it to a smaller um, state. Maybe you need to move it to a, uh, another relational source. And then to get it in the tool, it's, it's even boiling it down further. So what ends up happening is that while this data that it's introduced, may, part of it may be accessible to the end user, it's difficult for an analyst or uh, a casual user to go back to that big data lake and request some additional information without picking up the phone and, and asking IT, I need another cut of the data, I need a this level of granularity, I need it, you know, this time period, and then there's a, a long wait that goes on to get, to get the required information about the time they get sometimes it's just not relevant anymore. So what, what Florida does is really a uh, platform, as the name implies, uh, that sits uh, right against the do, and really it's meant to do the complete end-to-end -end solution. So not only getting the data out of the do, but then putting it in a format that's readily available for the end user, and then um, also providing visualization capability so the end user can analyze it. So we're really moving across the entire analysis value chain. The data mark to the visualization component. And the way we do that 
is, and I'll walk through this in the demonstration, but there's really three phases. One, we first describe the information that's in it. So as massive amounts of data sets start moving into HDFS, start moving into HIDE, sometimes it's, it can be difficult to understand exactly what's in there. So the first step of Insight 4 is to describe the information within HDFS from a semantic perspective and a, a way for end users to quickly search and find what data is available to be analyzed. Once that data is described, the next step is now that it's described, how do we get access to the end user so they can do quick analysis with it? And that's the second step is materialized. So we move the data via mapping its code that the user needs to analyze mapping. And then the third step is the visualization and the analysis. End-to-end -end where we describe, load the data into memory, and individualize. And it's meant to be a very iterative process. So if the user gets to a point where they want to analyze information, maybe maybe the data that's been loaded into memory is at the month level, and they spot a, a, a trend or an anomaly or, or something that's um, an outlier, and they need to do further analysis, but now they need to look at the data perhaps at a uh, a day level or an hour level, they can make the request and the NetSuite code will generate and bring the lower level of granularity from the new into memory. So that's a very much an iterative process. So that's pretty much what, what we're enabling. We're enabling self-service iterative analysis for all levels of So I'll, I'll just pause there before I go into the demonstration. Any, any questions on, on that? Yes, sir. So the question is, uh, based on what you're showing here, it looks like you're pulling a lot of the companies traditionally have been using structured data. I don't know if it's a name wrong or something. So you're moving that into Hadoop first before you're pulling it, or you can pull it from uh, separate sources? For the most part, we remove it into Hadoop, or have it moved into Hadoop um, to get the, the most scalable type of approach. There are certain ways you can pull EBC or JVC, some of those fields here. But I wouldn't bring it all. Is that correct? Yeah, to, to, to Chris's point, yes, we, we do have connectors to, to relational structure. So the beauty about uh, platform is that we were built solely on the two. So we understand how to generate efficient map reduced code. We, and we, we've been doing it for um, uh, a couple of years now since uh, the release of the first product. And, and as, as Chris mentioned, we're also going to be supporting uh, Spark as well. The other thing, um, and, and the reason that we, we're targeting specifically to do is because of the, the, just the volume of information that needs to be analyzed. There's plenty of tools out there that you're using today to analyze your, your relational data. The problem that they have sometimes is that they cannot scale to the, the size. So one of the things that um, Platora has is that we can um, scale horizontal and vertical. So uh, we're at a complete MVP platform, meaning that we have a series of nodes that are X number scalable. And as your data volume grows, you need more data in memory. You can just add additional nodes to your platform cluster. So we can really analyze any amount of information in that We've got um, some customers that are looking at data of, you know, one terabyte of data in memory being able to analyze that. And then that's backed up against the uh, uh, Hadoop cluster that we can take care of by just you know, a massive amount of data. Yeah. Yes, sir. Normally, a Hadoop uh, query will save its results into the Hadoop file system. When the analyst is doing iterative uh, analysis, is all of that being saved into HDFS? Yes. So it's saved into HDFS. It can also be exported as JSON or CSV. Uh, but, but basically, we, you know, Hadoop is your system of record in those cookies. So yes. Where do you all define the metadata? The, the metadata is defined in what we term the data sets. Okay. Uh, yeah. and, and that's kind of the recipe, uh, which you talked about. Um, but Paul will actually show you that. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so yeah, let's, could you go back to that a little bit? So, hold, hold on, hold on, just a second, Paul. We got another question. Yeah. Could you go back to the, the, all that slide right there where it talks about Hadoop? 
Yes, sir. And then there's an era to describe, and then you encounter platform. Describe what it means to describe. So basically, what is happening at the described level is we are have the have views or can look into Hadoop and we are defining data sets of all of the data in Hadoop that you may want to basically visual, move into the next size of materialize and visualize. And does Platforma perform that task or does the user community do that? Platforma, through an object driven environment, and Paul will show you, actually defines the data sets. It's all free. Yeah, yeah it's just misleading. Actually, it does all three as well. Okay. Yeah, it does all three. Um, as far as described materialized. That's what I didn't understand. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir.